And welcome to Spa for episode number 49 of the F1 2013 career mode series. As you can see, we're staying with Force India for the rest of the season, and hopefully we can take this car to the very top of the championship. As it stands at the moment, we're trailing Lewis Hamilton by 20 points in the Drivers' World Championship. So here we are in Spa. This is one of the tracks that should suit the Force India, but qualifying hasn't got off to the best start. Uh, we qualified in 12th place. I tried to stretch out my prime sets. Uh, for the entirety of Q1 and Q2, but unfortunately I just couldn't get in a uh, good lap in Q2, so I'm stuck in 12th place for the race, uh, but we do have a lot of pace, so I'm looking forward to how this race will go. We'll need to get off to a flying start. This is, once again, another crucial race for the championship. Wish me luck. Alright, so here we are on the grid of Spa. We qualified poorly, so now we need to make up for that in the race. So here we are once again with the cinematic view, and I just love this shot of the start of the race. Hopefully we can get off to a clean start, and away we go. It looks like we've had a fairly even start at the front of the field, and I'm maintaining my position in 12th place at the moment. I'm going to switch to the outside and try and get nice uh, traction out of turn one. Looks like we've done so, uh, so far. We raise our hand in frustration as we make ever so slight contact with the Lotus, but now we're up into 9th place, and uh, the start of this race has been uh, absolutely fantastic so far. So now I'm just trying to set up Kimi Raikkonen for the exit of the El Rouge corner. And he's turned into the path of us, and now we've been spun into the wall, and potentially this is our race over, is it? Is our car destroyed? No, it's not. We're still in this race somehow. Maldonado has now uh, been wrecked out of this race as well. I've got a puncture. I need to see a replay of that incident. That was just crazy stuff. I don't know what happened. I think Kimi Raikkonen sort of turned into our path. We got a beautiful exit out of El Rouge. Just had a fantastic run and then Kimi turns into our path and we had nowhere to go we sort of got side pod glitched into the wall there somehow we did not destroy our car there and we are still in the race Sergio Perez lost his front wing on our car and that's just unfortunate for Sergio there innocent bystander we lost our front wing we got a puncture Maldonado is out of the race and now we're just trying to limp this car back into the pits and so far it's not proving to be that great pretty much beaching it in the wall there, and that's uh, dropped us a lot of time as well, along with the incident at El Rouge. So now we're about 20 or 30 seconds behind the next car, and that is Sergio Perez, who's coming in for a pit stop as well. So at this phase of the race, I was almost contemplating just retiring and then skipping to Monza, because this has just been an absolute disaster here in Spa. But you know what? I thought... I may as well keep going. We, we're still in this race, so that's got to mean something. We're still in this race for a reason. I'm going to keep going. We know how poor the, the midfield runners are. We sometimes lap them in most races, so we do have a chance to maybe get some points. And with the prospect of safety cars, you never know what might happen in this Grand Prix. But uh, we put on another set of option tyres. I started to just absolutely go for a blast and uh, put in consecutive fast laps until now we've caught up to the back of Max Chilton now. So... We've caught up to the back, or caught up to the back markers now, and I'm starting to make an impression on this race. But uh, as you can see, we're only catching up to the back markers, and then there's a massive gap to the midfield runners. So we're going to need to continue to push like we are now. We do have pace. I've got a fresh engine in this car for this race, so uh, it should provide us some kind of uh, pace advantage over the field. But we'll see how we go in this race. Hopefully, there's a safety car that can sort of bring us back into the race. But I'm going to try and push as hard as I can for as long as I can. Avoiding Max Chilton there coming into uh, the middle sector now. 
and uh, we'll just be trying to get in front of these guys as quickly as possible. I don't want to be held up by these guys. Shields and brakes really early there. I had to dive to the inside to avoid uh, his slow car, but we get up the inside for P20. Next up is Charles Peak in the Caterham, and then in front of him is... Guido Vandegaard. I had to think about it there for a second, but coming through uh, Puon now, the double, fast double left hander, and now that I've got a bit of dirty air, it, it sort of negatively impacts my pace and my uh, front grip, but uh, either way, catching up to the back of Guido Vandegaard now, and that uh, fresh engine really does have the extra legs over the back markers on the back straight, but uh, cutting to lap 8 now, we've caught up to the back of Jules Bianchi, and surely we'll be able to dive it up the inside, coming into the bus stop and uh, the Force Senior is just far superior to a Marussia at this phase of the race. But now on lap 9, we have a safety car. And lads, our race is saved. We're going to come in for a new set of tyres at the end of this lap. And we're going to rejoin onto the back of the field. And we're going to potentially have a shot and maybe getting some points in this race. Hopefully, because Spa is such a long lap time, um, it's going to give me an extra chance to uh, catch up to the back of the... Uh, the queue. So, fingers crossed this works out. I'm the only person in the field to put on a new set of tyres, so this is going to play into my favour massively because the AI are only going to stop in four laps time or five laps time, so if we can uh, rejoin onto the back of the queue, pass a couple cars, then we might potentially have the lead after, what, two or three laps after green flag racing, and that is a massive turnaround if you think about it. Being... 30 seconds behind the last car on the end of the first lap and now we're probably going to lead the Grand Prix if we can get a nice restart here at the uh, on lap 11. So here we go, fresh set of tyres, we've now been released and now we can start overtaking cars well before the line. I don't know how Charlene Whiting allowed me to do this but I'm going to try and plough through this field. We've got a fresh set of tyres, the rest of the field are on dead tyres. Hopefully we can absolutely smash through the field and get this lead back. Alright, so here we are on lap 20, and it's come to that awkward phase in the race where I need to make a decision. Do I go for two stops, or do I revert to the three stops? Because I undercut the AI by about five laps, and ever since the AI have uh, put on their new set of tyres, they've all been faster than me, and my uh, prime tyres have really started to struggle in the last couple of laps. Uh, rejoining in front of Weber and Button, I only rejoin about five seconds in front of them, and they quickly caught me, so I think... I need to revert to a two stop, so I need to defend from these guys. I think this is going to be my best chance at getting this race win, so I'm going to try and do that. Weber goes up the inside coming into this middle sector section here, and uh, we hold off Mark Weber for now, but it's only going to be a matter of time before the AI start to uh, overtake me, so uh, cutting to lap 25 now, and as you can see, my tyres are fairly orange, and they're fairly uh, bad in comparison to the AI. Some some of the AI have gone for split strategies, some have put on the options for this stint, and some have gone for the prime. So I'm trying to stay out as long as I can. We're going three wide into this uh, section here. I need to make a decision because, oh no, I've lost the position to Button, and he's going to get the lead now. So um, I need to undercut uh, some of the auction runners who are about to come in again, but then there's the prime runners like Lewis Hamilton who's going to stay out for much longer. So uh, either way, it's not looking good. Uh, either way, the AI, I think someone's going to win out here, and it might be Hamilton who stays out for that extra maybe three or four laps. We'll have to wait and see. But coming in for what should be our final pit stop of the day, we're going to put on a set of prime tyres, and we've got to take these uh, prime tyres 
18 laps to the finish, and that's going to be a very tough ask. But I'm going to try and do my best to push as hard as I can to get track position once again, and then defend like hell for the rest of the race. Wish me luck, but here we are on lap 29. We caught up to the back of Jensen Button, who just came into the pits on the previous lap, and now we're uh, trying to get up the inside with the help of DRS. No, no DRS, a lot of curves actually, and uh, we get his position back, so... Here we are on lap 32, and it looks like Hamilton has rejoined in front of us. So at this phase of the race, Hamilton was really good on his on his old prime tyres, and uh, he was just too quick, and he rejoined in front of me despite undercutting him by several laps. But uh, here we are on lap 35. Now Fernando Alonso has managed to uh, ease his way onto the back of me, and now he's trying to pass me around the outside, which turns to the inside for this corner, and we're going side by side, and Alonso runs wide and gives me that position back. So I think this might be an almighty battle with Alonso again. Just like in Hungary, it's going to continue on to Spa. And uh, he's trying to go around the outside, coming into the bus stop section. And my tyres at this phase of the race are absolutely gone. I'm just trying to keep the thing on the black stuff. But uh, it's proving to be a real task, as my uh, fuel is also an issue in this race as well. Alonso goes around the outside, coming into turn one. I'm going to dive it up the inside, but he's going to have a better run on the exit. And uh, I'm going to have to put it up in a fast just to stay with Alonso. I can't afford to let him get away because Hamilton is leading this race. He's also my championship rival, and the more points that I leak to Hamilton, the tougher it's going to be to win this championship. And hopefully I get DRS here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not too sure who gets it. Yes, I do. And uh, we just uh, stay with him here. Go up the inside, coming into the middle sector once again. And then I'll put it back down into lean because I need to save fuel massively because I'm minus one lap down on fuel. And I'm not too sure how close it is in regards to minus two laps. So I need to save as much as I can through the middle sector and then put it up in the fast just to defend from Alonso. But as you can see here, we're just going side by side through here. Lap after lap. It's just absolutely beautiful racing here. And Alonso runs out wide onto the gravel there, but there wasn't any contact on my end, as you'll see on the replay here. Just side by side through there, and I'll try and get another angle for it so I can see that there was no contact here. Nothing malicious here. Alonso just tries to leave a little bit too much room there, and he puts himself into the gravel. And he actually dropped back a couple of positions as well. So unfortunate there for Alonso, but uh, now Rosberg has come up into third. And now he's in second place as I make an uncharacteristic mistake there. Locking up the inside front. My tyres are absolutely gone at this stage. I was trying, uh, pushing as hard as I can just to keep Rosberg behind me. But unfortunately that mistake let him through. And now on the penultimate lap, Fernando Alonso is trying to go around the outside. Once again, will it work for him this time? We'll have to wait and see. But once again, we're just going side by side through here. It's absolutely fantastic. Alonso is a little bit smarter this time. He gets a nice exit coming into this understeering corner hairpin. And he looks like he might maintain the position now. My tyres are absolutely gone at this stage. And I just can't stay with Alonso, unfortunately. I run out wide, almost to the wall there. And as you can see, I'm clearly frustrated as Alonso has stolen that, pole pos uh, that podium position. And here we are on the last lap. Uh, Lewis Hamilton has taken out this race win. Nico Rosberg in second to round out a Mercedes 1-2. You know, guys, after we started this race, hanging off the barriers to come back through the field and finish fourth, that is just an absolute miracle. Really well done. That's 12 points. So there we go. That is the Belgian Grand Prix done and dusted. I can't believe we managed to come back after that first lap. We were down and out, 30 seconds behind the nearest car, a puncture, no wing, and to come back through the field, finish fourth place and salvage 12 points. That could be absolutely crucial for the championship if we win it by less than 12 points. You've held on to second in the driver's championship. So Lewis has extended his championship lead ever so slightly. Fernando is also caught up a little bit, but this championship battle is really starting to heat up at the back end of this season. Force India is still in fourth place, so we're looking good so far in the Constructors' standings. But in the comments, let me know if you think we can win the championship from here. I'll be eager to see what you guys think of that. But uh, that's been the Belgian Grand Prix for today. Until the next Grand Prix in Monza, I'll see you next time.